Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for another Jeep video. So I'm going to work on the engine. It's almost ready to go back on the engine hoist and go back in the Jeep. Sometime this week, I think it's going to go back in the Jeep. But today we're going to deal with these grommets. They are a leak source, so we're going to deal with that. And um, let me set the camera up for this. So, you know, the way this system works is the front port allows clean air in and the back port is a restricted opening that allows fumes from the engine to go into the intake. And in and of itself, it's not a big deal. These parts wear out, as all parts do, but they don't make this port anymore. In fact, you can't even... Now, this one's not so bad because it does pop out, but, you know, it's full of crap and it's old and brittle and loose. And so, you know, you're going to have um, vacuum leaks. That's what you're going to have. And the bigger problem is going to be getting this out. So we're going to see if that'll come out in one piece or if we're going to end up having to take the valve cover off again in order to get that out. So the solution is that Dorman makes grommets and the older style of this doesn't uh, fits in the same size grommet in the front and the back. So this is just Jeep adding needless complexity to the vehicle. So that one wasn't so bad. I got it out. It's still a hot mess in terms of leaks. But as they say, put litter in its place, and we just did. And clearly, this has been leaking for a while. So we're going to do our best to clean it up. link to these parts in the uh, video description so if you have the same problem that you need to solve you can use the links in the video description to acquire the parts so these are standard Dorman seals and wow look at that it's a nice tight fitting seal uh, you could do this with the with the uh, vehicle in. So this is one of the things that's different is, well, this is gonna be a pain in the ass to get back in. There we go. Boy, that, that fits in there really tight. So, you know, it's not gonna have this little lip to hold it in, but clearly that lip wasn't holding it in anymore. So. Let's do the front one next. All right, and then this, this hose here. You know what? There it goes. Not to worry. Clearly this needed to go. There may be some don't try this at home moments in here, but we'll see. I'm going to come in here. That's a little too thick. I'm hoping to not have to take the valve cover off, but I'm prepared to. So I think this requires more leverage, and we're going to get more leverage here. And we're going to 
gonna get lots of little pieces is what we're gonna get. Actually, I think what this needs is a pair of vice grips. But before I go there, I wonder if my $6 puller can be pressed into service here. Maybe, maybe not. Hey there, what do you know? A $6 puller is the tool that extracts that. And it got both pieces. That is the way to do that. That was easy. And clearly it's been leaking for a while because there is oil all around the edges of that. And I don't think that's where we should be seeing. We shouldn't be seeing oil. That should be oil tight. So that saves the hassle of having to take apart the valve cover gasket yet again. You know, I just thought Dorman's parts were kind of cheesy, but I'm really liking these. Not so much on the package, but the parts themselves are really good. I think they enlarged these. I actually think they improved this part. And the best part is uh, these are not very expensive. <laughs> Big hole. Big hole goes in the front. So rocking it around seems to be enough to get it in, and then spinning it helps it seat. Alright. I don't remember if this one went this way or if it went this way, and I don't know that it really matters. So the other piece of this puzzle was I felt like it would be a good idea to replace the hoses because these are all worn the hell out. This little plastic piece is it, but so Crown Automotive makes the hose for the back. And this is going to help me not to have vacuum leaks. We'll slide. So that slides on there. This is nice and tight and pliable. Uh, this one probably going to be easier to put gloves on. There we go. Just had to break it loose a little bit. Um, not very friendly with pliers. And then this just slides on. Oh, okay, that's why it wouldn't slide on. It's because this piece needs to come off. And cracked and rotted, which means that it isn't sealing worth a shit anyway. Um, yeah, so it just split when I tried to take it off. So these vacuum leaks are the bane of your Jeep's existence. Oh, 
although that one Might be a special piece of rubber that was in there. see that fitting on there. Let me see if this had a part number on it. It does. Let me go see if I can find this part. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so this is a half inch and um, we're just going to see if we can enlarge it not really the right way to do it, but it might work. clearly where it needs to be. The only thing I can think of is to put a piece of 5 8 hose around this and clamp it. But that, that's just fucking wrong. Well, there you go. All right, that's how you get it on there. Okay, so that is how it fits on there. And boy, I'm glad you guys watched because I would not have, uh, I would never have guessed that one. <laughs> wow, what a pain in the ass. All right, well, we learned something new and exciting every day. And that is new and exciting because I would never have fucking guessed that that's how you get that piece of hose to stretch. So, uh, not to leave you with no adventure, I did buy the other hose, and it's a lot simpler, but I don't know which way it goes. Okay, so I think it goes like this. Jump. 
So we went from hardly flexible to really flexible. And, you know, that's just what happens over time. So these have been replaced at this point, and really all that's left is to put it back. Um, oh, I need to put the belt on. I guess I can do that on this, this video. So, well, I'll be right back. Now, in the strictest sense of the world, this does not need to be done right now. It's just a hell of a lot easier to get to right now. And I did print off the diagram. I bought a nice Gates Micro V belt. Um, I will post the, a link to the part number um, in the video description. Here. I've not done this very many times on this engine, so that's part of the reason I wanted to do it with the engine out of the vehicle, is it would just significantly simplify my adventures. So we've got to get that, and otherwise we're on target. Now this can be done with a couple of different tools. Depending on what you have at your disposal, a breaker bar is the right thing. But a wrench will also do the trick. So I'm going to check my fitting. There is a gauge built in and it should be between here and here and when it gets to here it has to be replaced. So this is built into all the better tensioners um, and uh, you know something you never knew but something's really easy to see out of the vehicle and impossible to see when it's in the vehicle. But now we have a nicely tensioned um, belt and it's a whole lot easier to do it out of the vehicle than it is in. All right, the next thing I'm gonna work on is this uh, ground strap. It's a part number 56009161. Uh, the part number is barely visible right there. Uh, so anyway, they don't make this anymore. It's discontinued, nobody has any. I was an idiot and I cut the, or ripped the ground wire in half when I did this, so I gotta try and recycle this because this is a high temperature one. It's made out of steel. I could buy a hundred of them, but I don't want a fucking hundred of them. So anyway, we're gonna try and recycle this. I think I can open it back up. Uh, so we'll see. So it helps to have a vise. So we're gonna set this in here upside down so that it holds the piece that we need. I need more light. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm sorry that's a little difficult for you guys, but Actually, I'm going to go ahead and lower this. So, 
have added the light to me as well. And we're just going to see if we can get in here and grab these. There we go. Whoops, time for a new set of those. I'll be right back. All right, so these at least have a chance of being higher quality. They're Exolite. Yes, that worked perfectly. So now what we need to do is reset this to get to the part that holds the actual, that does the business. And I'm going to go get a small hammer. I'll back. Okay, so the idea is we're going to use this little tiny hammer to drive this in here. So that side's good. And that side's good. So I think I've opened this back up. Yeah, there we go. So we've opened this back up. Now what we need to do is go get the crimpers and see if we can put it back together. So I want to take a second to talk about this tool. I bought a really nice set of interchangeable jaws from, it's a wire fly unit. I will put the part number in here. So uninsulated terminals use part number B, part number B. So I'm going to put these in and see if I can put these terminals back together with this. What I like about these, aside from the fact that it's a cool tool, is these just slide in. So they slide out and slide in and that's all there is to it for making them work. So, we'll see if they're going to work on this. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to look at them again. Hang on a second. So, it says they're the right ones, but I don't 100% I don't believe that. I'm going to clean this up with acetone. I feel like there's some grease in here. It's a Jeep. There's grease every fucking place. As usual, um, I'm going to get my squirt bottle because I think it'll actually be easier. So let me put some acetone in my little squirt bottle here. Good thing I'm not in a commercial shop because I'm doing all sorts of horribly not safe things like spilling acetone on the floor and just ignoring it. But this is my garage. So I want to thoroughly degrease this, and I'm doing it like this. It's not going to hurt it to get all over the engine. So that's a lot cleaner. Uh, apparently I need to scrub this a little. That's good enough. Let me put that away. Okay, so we're feeling froggy. So we're going to try and crimp this back on. And the first step in that process is to minify the end of this wire and slide it back in here. All right, so at this point, it's crimpable. Um, it is gonna shorten this a little bit, and that should be okay. I don't 
think that's going to work. That's going to work either. This might. Yeah, these are not the right, this is not the right shape. Let me see if I've got the right shape in my set. Unfortunately, I do not have the right professional crimpers. Um, so it's going to fall to the less professional crimpers, i.e. vice grips. And this is going to be a little trial and error, but what we really want to do is pinch this flat. Getting there. A little bit more. Um, okay, so that's starting to feel like it should. That piece just broke off. Good enough, so we're going to go ahead and crush it. Not super happy about that, but it's tight. So I think it's a good electrical connection. You know, um, I just didn't want to spend $31 on these. And what I really need is a replacement, and that's even harder to come by. So it would actually be this one. And so a half inch, half inch, about a foot long. So I'll look for one of these because I have a hunch I'm going to need it at some point. Um, but this is good enough for me to put it back together. So that's exactly what's about to happen. Is it's going to come back here and get put back together. And the torque value for this is, yeah, that'll fucking work. Um, and that's quite literally the torque value it's going to get. So I think that's good enough. Um, there is nothing on the firewall that's that far away, so that means it has plenty of give and take. Um, and then this other piece goes down here to the block. Again, ain't going to be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and secure the other side of it now that I understand what's going on. At least I think that's where it went. if that's not where it went because it doesn't want to go back in that spot so maybe it goes somewhere else so I'll leave that one alone um, and we'll just toss that up in there uh, okay so the next thing is the Tupperware and the Tupperware sits up on top of this quite literally and there's a nut that goes there. I'll bet you that's what this one was. So let me find a socket for this. It is a 7 sixteenths. Now, I don't remember the orientation of that one, so I brought it out 
Um, I brought it out sideways so that no matter what, it can't get crushed. Um, and it's sticking over the end of the heat, so the heat should keep the grease and the oil out of it. Or at least burn it off if it does get in there. Alright, it's time to pull the rags out of the exhaust. Uh, I had those there to prevent bad things from getting in. And I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, because the next step in this project is to get the engine on uh, the hoist and just see how it fits. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon.